Time now for Conversation Nation. Joining me tonight, political analyst Jason Johnson, MSNBC's Crystal Ball, and Democratic analyst Mark Hanna. Thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you, Thanks Brad. Good to be here, Brad. Brad. I want to go back to President Obama's stirring speech from Selma this weekend on the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. He delivered one of the most powerful speeches of his presidency, celebrating what it means to be American. That's what America is. Not stock photos or airbrushed history or feeble attempts to define some of us as more American than others. America's not some fragile thing. We are large, in the words of Whitman, containing multitudes. We are boisterous and diverse and full of energy, perpetually young in spirit. For everywhere in this country, there are first steps to be taken. There's new ground to cover. There are more bridges to be crossed. And it is you, the young and fearless at heart, the most diverse and educated generation in our history who the nation is waiting to follow. Jason, some thought this sounded like a rebuttal to Rudy Giuliani and other Republicans who've accused the president of not loving this country. Your reaction? No, I think this is just President Obama speaking from the heart. Rudy Giuliani, he's not even that important <laughs> to President Obama. I don't think he would waste his time throwing shade and at I him at that. such an important event. Uh, I, I think he really spoke from the heart. And I, I, this is one of the top four or five speeches I have heard President Obama give. I have seen tons of them. I was there. He was moved by the moment. And he gave an answer to the cynics. I thought it was fantastic when he said, you can't look at what happened in Ferguson today and say we've made no progress in 50 years. And yeah. he really explained that. I, I was impressed. I, I, to I totally agree with Jason. I mean, it was a spectacular speech. It was moving. But I do think he had to, in the back of his mind, be thinking about this whole conversation about whether or not he loved America and what that means. I mean, to love this country is to want to see it continually get better. And I loved also how he talked about not airbrushing history, but actually looking at history, right, and remembering the way that it really was at that moment, not just the sanitized view that we sometimes get in the media or that we sometimes look back on history with. So it was an exceptional moment. Mark? Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, Rev. Look, the president loves this country enough to tell the truth about our history right. and to tell the truth about our values and to, frankly, confront some of the uglier pa uh, parts of our, of our nation's history. Uh, so when people like Rudy Giuliani go out there and say the president wasn't, you know, raised the same way he was, I mean, that, it's a hideous thing for him to say, first of all. But second of all, on some level, it's true. The president had uh, a... a, a, a childhood had an experience growing up that was different from Rudy Giuliani's because he's a black American and he faced adversity that Rudy Giuliani never had to. So I think the president sees where we are as a country, sees the progress we've made, loves us for the progress, and you know what? Loves us for the warts and all. Loves this country uh, despite its, uh, the, it, its sort yeah, of... Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I, I think you're right. I think past. that the president, uh, I don't think, was thinking about Rudy or anyone right. in particular. I think he was trying to really address the whole idea of loving America, and not just himself. I think he was trying to interpret that for a lot of people that raised questions that he was saying doesn't mean they don't love the country. This is what the country was. I thought it was an important part of a very, very good, very effective speech. But now to a controversy over another president, George W. Bush, who was in Selma. The former president joined the march, and it was good to see him there. But some right-wing blogs were outraged over the weekend, alleging the New York Times intentionally cropped President Bush, Bush out of its front-page photograph. Here's the picture as it appears in the Times. The newspaper pushed back, saying there was no crop, and explained that President Bush was in the sunlight and difficult to see in this photo taken by another news organization. Now, I'm, I might add, I'm in the, in the beginning, but I was on the side where there was sun. I, I thought all of us were, the, the, there was a small group in that delegation with the president and the former president. Everyone was very courteous to President Bush. There was no pushback. We wish more Republicans had been there. Mark, 
rather than arguing over a photograph, shouldn't they and all of us be focusing on the fact that President Bush was there applauding voting rights, unlike many current leaders in the GOP? Absolutely, Rev. Look, the, uh, the, I wish the Daily Caller and these publications spent as much time talking about the president's speech and talking about and writing about the, uh, the historic moment itself. Um, and they don't, they, they for, you know, conveniently forget to mention that the New York Times did mention that President Bush was up there on the stage with him and some of the accomplishments that the Bush administration made in terms of civil rights. So it actually, it just seems disingenuous. It seems so yeah. self-absorbed from the, the right right Russell, now it seems yeah. like it's not about you frankly it's, it's not about the president it's about yeah. 50 years ago and about the, uh, john lewis and about the people uh, who have been advocating for civil rights yourself included rev it was good it, to see you on the right behind sad, the president's I, I, uh, shoulder i think it's there. a sad symbol of how small the gop and the conservative movement has become that out of this great historical moment with an incredible speech with you know, at least an incredible un unifying moment among former presidents. We'd like, as you said, Rev, to see some current Republican leadership there as I well. I did but see Kevin McCarthy, the majority leader, was there. Mm -hmm. All yes, the candidates, so all the primary candidates were out in Iowa stumping. But that this is what you choose to focus on is right. just sad, frankly. It's pathetic. Well, everybody stay with me. We'll be right back with the Apple Watch. Are you going to get one? and controversy over this woman. Does she look nearly nine months pregnant to you? Pierce, I got a role that is perfect.